Hi, it's Sachi. I made this beret hat recently and I absolutely love it. All the pieces are cut on bias and as a result, the hat sits nicely on top of my head. But it took me many tries to get the shape just right. I wanted a shape that is not too small or too overwhelming. Sometimes I have trouble styling beret hats because they don't stay in the angle I like. I was trying to make a beret I can just throw it on my head and look good. As you can see, pattern making for a hat is very subtle and even the smallest changes affect how it looks on your head. I decided on this shape and you can download this finalized version on my website. I will leave the link in the description box. Shadowed area represents half inch seam allowance. You can change this seam allowance to a quarter inch if you prefer not to trim the seam allowance later. This is a brushed cotton on fold. On this pattern, these arrows represent grains of the fabric. You need to place the pattern like this, so it's on bias grain. So that's up and down grain and horizontal grain like this. And if your fabric doesn't have direction, you could go like this and this to save the fabric. But if you're using corduroy or velvet, you need to keep the nap the same. You can only place the pattern like this. And not alternate like this. I thought my fabric didn't have a direction, but it later turned out that my fabric in fact did have a direction. But after making so many mock-ups, I was tired, so I decided not to recut the pieces. I cut eight pieces of the same shape, and now I need to cut one band piece on bias. It needs to be 24 inches by 4 inches. To cut the piece easily, I made the bias fold and measured 2 inches from the fold. I also cut 8 lining pieces out of cotton flannel. Sew pieces together with right sides facing each other. Start sewing at the base and stop at the center of the hat. Repeat with two more pieces so you attach half of the hat together. When I came to the center of the hat, I made sure I went one stitch past the center point so that there is no chance of making a small hole at the center top of the hat. When you are dealing with bias cut pieces, you want to avoid pulling on fabric as much as possible so the pieces don't stretch out of shape. But you also want to keep the two layers from shifting around under the presser foot. On bias cut pieces, I tried to push the top layer forward while I slightly pulled the under layer toward me with my thumb. Also, since these pieces are curved, I tried to rotate the piece with my left hand. I trimmed the seam allowances to about 3 eighths of an inch. Trim the seam allowance at the center. You don't want to cut the actual stitches or cut too close to them. Trim just enough to lay the seam allowance open without too much bulk. Open the seam allowances using your fingers or seam roller. And from the right side of the fabric, stitch down the seam allowances about 3 16 of an inch from the seam. You probably can't really see the stitches, but I did both sides of the seams. Thank you. 
Make two of the half sides and put their right sides together. Make sure the center points are matching and stitch with half inch seam allowance. Then trim the seam allowance and stitch them down as before. I use this one and a quarter inch wide flat elastic for inside of the band. I marked at my head circumference plus half inch, made sure it wasn't twisted, and sew the connection with a Z pattern. Sew so the short ends of the band piece together to make a circle. Open the seam allowance and place the elastic inside. Sandwich the elastic with the band fabric. Fold at the seam to find the opposite side of it. Make a small notch to mark the halfway point. Align the seam on the band with one of the seams of the hat and align the clipped notch in the band with the opposite seam of the hat. The band is actually cut smaller than the hat base, so stretch the band to fit the hat base. Distribute the band evenly and place clips or pins to keep it in place. Sew the band to the hat with half inch seam allowance. Push the elastic toward the inside of the folded edge so it doesn't get caught in the stitch. Make sure to try the hat at this point so you can make adjustments. Put together the lining pieces in the same way but I skipped the stitching down the seam allowances. I was just lazy, but it's up to you and also depends on the fabric you're using. You can fold the seam allowance like this and attach the lining at the seam entirely by hand stitching. I did partially by machine to speed up the process. Align one of the seams on the hat and one of the seams of the lining with the right side of fabric facing each other. Start stitching and line up the next seams as you sew on the previous stitch. Leave enough length open to flip the hat right side out. Now hand stitch the opening closed.
With the flannel lining, it definitely became poofier and warmer, but you might want to pick a thinner lining or skip it entirely depending on the look you want. Here is the side tilt look if you want more smurfy vibe. I actually like this look a lot. The way I attached the lining was easy and clean looking. I definitely recommend it for a quick project. My only gripe about this finish is that the fabric and the lining are separated at the base and they don't drape together, which means that you sometimes get weird wrinkling you can see from outside. To prevent that, I usually layer the outer fabric and the lining fabric together before I attach them to the headband or a brim and treat them as one layer. Then attach a ribbon to hide the seam allowance. I will leave this head as is because the wrinkling is not that bad, but I might make another one to experiment with the other attaching method. Thank you for watching the video to the end. I hope it inspired you to sew your own winter hat.